The new Resident Evil spooked me. Against all odds, Resident Evil 7 is a dark, bleak, bitterly oppressive experience that actually had me frightened as I wandered cautiously from room to room. All without, for the most part, not making me a completely defenseless baby at all times. Giving me tools to fight back while still providing a sense of dread and uncertainty. And that is not what I expected, and it's not something I've seen from a horror game in a while. From the early demos of Resi 7, with its lack of weaponry and played out paranormal phenomena, I can only imagine now that they were simply trying as much as possible to get that dejected PT crowd interested, because none of that is really present in the finished game. As a lone civilian on the search for a missing wife, Ethan Winters spends most of his time in Resident Evil 7 collecting resources like a multitude of guns and ammo and using them against very tangible, very real mutated monsters. And that's great, Resi 7 feels like a return to the basic structure of the original PlayStation Resident Evil games, where the sanctuary of safe rooms provides solace from a twisted Metroidvania-like level, where supplies and ammo must be managed and stored in item boxes, and if you choose to up the difficulty, finite cassette tapes must be used to save. I think as a lot of people were, what I thought would be a shallow attempt to cash in on current trends of disempowering indie first-person horror games is actually, gameplay-wise at least, a real attempt to create a traditional survival horror title. In terms of that gameplay, the way it differs from those older titles is of course that new perspective. Putting the player in first person and clouding their view of course makes it harder to be aware of the environment, creating a more claustrophobic, spooky kooky experience. But it does seem like it's primarily here to mainly take advantage of the rising trend of VR headsets. I don't own one of those, so I can't take advantage of that side of the experience, so the game as is being in first person does feel like a bit of a cheat. At this point, after an entire mainline series of third person titles. And it fundamentally alters the kind of pure game design those original games had. These are the kind of games you can beat without taking any damage, knife only, where every section feels structured and deliberate. These things can kind of be done in Resident Evil 7, it's just the game isn't really built in a way that encourages doing them. Resi 7 can't help but feel a little less considered than the previous titles in first person. It's harder to judge the distance and weight of an attack from this perspective, and while I'm happy there's a block, semi, parry thing, it doesn't nullify damage. Which is extra frustrating on hard when enemies can destroy you super easy. Again, because of this first person perspective, the game also has an easier time taking control away for unskippable first-person scenes. Again, not something that works very well on hard when save points start doubling as checkpoints, and you have to sit there watching things again and again. Yeah, the originals had in-game unskippable cutscenes too, which uh, sucks as well, but in first-person, eh, the way it's done here is different. In the older games, it's very clear that, oh, oh, we're in cutscene mode now. But in 7, playing and then having control taken away is all one continuous stream, because it's trying to keep you in the immersive experience, so there's something transgressive about them. This is why Resident Evil 7 marks such a hard point when trying to tabulate whether this series is on the rise or not, because everything it does marks a complete shift in priorities from the madman action blockbuster that was Resi 6. Resi 6 is set in big open kind of thrown together areas with not much rhyme or reason. Resident Evil 7 has really cool detailed level design that feels rewarding to traverse and decipher. Resi 6 has blistering, chaotic, fluid combat mechanics that feel great to mess around and experiment with, while Resi 7 has slow cursor movement and puts you in awkward first-person melee fights. Both design choices are made to create a certain experience. If I were to judge each Resident Evil on a gradient of spooky, slow-paced level design to mechanically complex combat, it would look something a little like this. Resi 7 would go somewhere around here. The question is, what would a game that combined great spooky atmosphere and level design and tight mechanical combat be like in this series? Boom! It's in the middle of the graph, everybody's favourite, Resident Evil 4. RE7 does have some things in common with RE4, which might explain its critical acclaim, like how it put the entire series lore to one side to concentrate on a brand new story with only loose ties to old ones. So all the random reviewers out there can just jump in without any knowledge of the backstory. But it goes even further than RE4, even being about new characters with little more but reference here and there to previous games constituting continuity. And I ended up being fairly okay with this once I started warming up to the lead character and I was so involved in his plight that the gratuitous madness of the rest of the series faded into the background to allow for this more oppressive approach. But when you think about it, Resident Evil 7 doesn't provide scenarios that differ all that much from other Resident Evil games. You're just now experiencing them from this new perspective and with the skills of an everyman instead of a trained police officer. 
You're still dealing with bioweapons gone loose, crazy people, and blowing up giant abominable eldritch looking abominations. And again, that is not what I expected after that demo. Seeing the lead go from terrified and bewildered to overcoming the usual resi odds was actually rather satisfying. He really does grow and strengthen, unlike a lot of silent protagonists and these kind of jumpy first person horror fests that are so popular right now. Even when the game does kind of tumble into scripted YouTube Let's Play horror antics, the budget and quality Capcom can provide to this style of game is, I'd say, ahead of its contemporaries. Temporaries. Usually, first-person horror adventures are made by small indie studios looking to turn over an effective game quickly, but Resi 7 packs its frights with some pretty cool optional moments that you can in fact miss. I mean, they are missable, so I can't really say if there are loads of them, but nevertheless, I ran into some pretty fun and quirky crazy sequences either way. All this combined with this title's old-school sensibilities was giving me a rush playing RE7, to be honest. Not everything is perfect, dropped items don't go on the ground, instead they go away forever, making some of the inventory management feel artificially difficult in some areas. There are some invincible enemies that can't be killed until their respective scripted moments, which is normal for a resi game. But even Nemesis could be downed for some optional items. Here you can kind of make these guys run away for a bit, but attacking them head on didn't seem like a very rewarding option, even when hunkered down with plenty of ammo. But I gotta say, when Resi 7 gets its groove on, it gets its groove on. When the title gets into its rhythm is when it really shines. Deciphering the layout of the environment, charting a course back and forth between rooms, managing items and equipment in cozy safe areas, going from a lost puppy to keen canine with knowledge of the environment. Becoming the master of the land, finding optional hidden secrets, preserving resources, kicking the asses of persistent bosses, and then quipping once they blow up into wet little chunks. Brilliant. Resident fucking evil. Unfortunately, the game kind of reaches a high point by about the two-thirds mark and abandons the more interconnected environments for more linear, disposable levels akin to later RE games. And this is where the title loses a bit of that novelty and spark. The game becomes more action-focused, and it's here that the dialing back of the combat mechanics doesn't gel quite as well, and you're left feeling like you're in a bit of a simplistic first-person shooter. The problem with RE7 is that I was kind of waiting for it to shock me with something new and unexpected that I haven't seen in any other game, and it never really quite gets there. Environment-wise, I was anticipating Resi 7 to drop some kind of mad new location that would be iconic to this entry. The mansion, the mineshaft, the basement, the wooden structure suspended on water. It's all very standard Resi, at least when it comes to locations. And of course, what modern Resident Evil game would be complete without the obligatory tanker level which needs to be in every Resident Evil game now by law? Frickin' barges are more iconic to Resident Evil now than just residences. Enemy variety also takes a huge step back from RE6 where there were just tons of new enemy types waiting around every corner. Here it's like in their attempts to make the spookiest game possible, they ask themselves, what's the scariest Resident Evil enemy? Well, people love to meme it up with the regenerators from 4, those were terrifying. Okay, just make every enemy in Resident Evil 7 a regenerator then. We're in the money. If not milking other Resi games, and the title is pretty happy to lift most of its ideas from other horror media. The missing wife who sends a message, a cassette recording with horrifying content the scary children trope, the spooky southern hillbillies, and that's not to say these aspects aren't handled well. The Baker family who pursue you throughout the game are cool, they remind me of the Shibito from Siren Blood Curse, who go about the environment trying to murder you while also displaying remnants of their previous non-zombie personas through their dialogue and mannerisms. Eat it, it's good. Dumb some bitch was no good if it hit him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They also once again give the series that feeling of going up against a succession of mad villains, each with their own quirks and tactics when trying to hunt you down and kill you. Problem is, it all does feel a bit derivative. After finishing Resi 7, I'm not really sitting back here with that wow moment in my mind that made me think, man, that's out there, that's some new broken ground. Even RE5 had some moments like that. A scenario, place, situation I haven't seen in other games. Don't let the new perspective fool you. While the way you experience this Resi game is different, what you're getting is a lot of already trodden ground. I mean, I guess if you've only played Resident Evil 4 through 6, the use of the old mechanics might blow your mind and cloud that fact. But I was just like, yeah, it's all kind of been done. The game was written, or rather, narrative consulted by its first Western writer. The guy behind Spec Ops The Line and Fear. Oh, sorry. F-E-A-R. And this might explain why the game lacks some of that cheeky charisma and action hero flim-flammery the Japanese like to stuff this franchise with. 
This connection to fear might also explain why a certain rather tired horror trope gets dragged out for the last chunk of the game. I will give the writing some credit because it does adhere to a lot of the basic tenets of Resident Evil storytelling where it can. The odd cheesy quip and some nice sparks of optimism here and there, so it's not completely western grimdark like I was fearing. What's added, of course, is more of a gradual build-up from helplessness to determination in our lead. Where things start out super bleak as you play as a regular civilian who really has to up his game to stay alive, unlike previous protags who keep their cool most of the time. I liked the ending, even if it did break Resi tradition in a certain way when it really didn't have to. But the change in scale, of course, can't help but make it feel anemic compared to the frivolous madman ways Resi 6 wrapped up. It also left open a bunch of questions that the game then teased some answers for after the credits with some free DLC. That's coming out later this year. And here is where Resi 7 loses a bit of my goodwill as a series fan. Sure, they dial back the scale and tone and make a more subtle, claustrophobic, concentrated horror game with a shorter campaign, but even the oldest Resi games had more to offer out of the gate than this. Multiple campaigns, unlockable scenarios, mercenaries mode. I'll give them some points, hard mode does remix a few item placements, but that's hardly a plus to those of us who don't want to get massacred to bits. There are also a few unlockables here, but so much is coming in paid and non-paid DLC that it just feels unfinished compared to older titles. Resident Evil 6 had mountains of content, and you can argue with me how much you enjoyed it all, but it was way more of a value proposition than this. And while we're here on this subject, can we all stop pretending that content density, extra features, and value isn't worthy of praise and games criticism? Extra modes, unlockables, remixed campaigns, and secret challenges. All this stuff adds significantly to an experience. It's it's just as much part of the game as the bits in between the first cutscene and the credits of the campaign. I get that game critics just want to play a title and move on to the next so their standards for monetary value is lower, but can we please stop awarding perfect scores to games with demonstrably less content than previous entries in the same series it's part of that then want us to pay for extra segments a week later after launch? Stuff that would have been part of the full price tag before DLC? Can we stop being nickel and dying for stuff that was obviously made during the main development cycle? I'm just a crazy guy with a crazy dream. So what is the final verdict on Resident Evil 7 Biohazard and the overall direction of the Resident Evil series in general? What do I prefer, Resi 6 or Resi 7? Well, on reflection, I feel like I'll ultimately be returning to Resi 6 more. The spark, charisma, and surplus of content and general charm is just unmatched. Just talking about Resi 6 right now makes me want to go play Mercenaries. Also, the unskippable cutscenes and long-ass walkie-talkie intro, like with most games that have them, is going to cut down on the appeal of extra run-throughs. But overall, I enjoyed Resi 7, and it gives me a lot of optimism for further in-house Capcom Resi games. They set their mind to making a crazy action game and delivered with some blemishes. And then they set their mind to making a super spooky, claustrophobic horror game and delivered with some blemishes. And if they can execute well anything they put their mind to like that, then I can continue to be excited even if my Resi Law boner isn't being softly caressed and tickled the way I might want. I still stand by the fact, though, that this game wasn't much of a risk in this day and age. First person horror is big business. YouTube does half your advertising for you. If they had chosen to make a tank controlled, fixed camera angle game, for their seventh main Resi title, then yeah, I might be patting them on the back and breaking out terminology like legendary and oh shit, son. Hey, who knows, maybe I'll replay this one day with VR and be like, oh my god, first person was totally warranted, this is amazing. Capcom's braced. Hopefully, if they continue down this route, they can also build on the design and make some more original scenarios too. In conclusion, Resident Evil 7 did just enough right for me to give it a recommendation to fans and newcomers alike. All hope isn't quite gone yet. Resi's still balling for now. A second. Where's where's title screen guy? Resident Evil. Where's the Resident Evil Seven Biohazard? Okay, never mind. Zero out of ten.